okay, the burning question that I get asked so much from patients. So I, I do a lot of free consultations, always free consultations. Uh, I have patients come in and their burning question is, am I ready for dentures? So, you know, I am not a dentist, I am a denturist, so it really is not my decision to uh, make that determination. That is up to the dentist, he is the doctor, and that is within his scope of practice. However, I have been doing this a long, 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 long time, for decades, and uh, I know what I see. I'm still going to refer the patient to the dentist for uh, that final, you know, determination. But, you know, sometimes patients aren't ready for dentures, and they come in and see me for a uh, consultation, and they're, they're just really at the point with uh, spending money on dental work and having dental pain um, that they just wanna throw their hands up and get all their teeth pulled and get dentures. Um, I talk a lot of people out of dentures because I think that dentures should be a step that is taken only when your natural teeth cannot be saved. Now, that's a loaded you know, variable. Um, there are a lot of people who can't afford to do the work that uh, is required to save their teeth. Um, there are a lot of people that just aren't in that situation, unfortunately. Uh, dental care, care is very expensive and uh, especially um, restorative dental care for teeth. So I always do try to talk a patient, if it is possible, into having a partial denture. If they're missing some teeth or they have teeth that are just so far gone, they can't afford to get them fixed and they want them out, I try to talk them into getting a partial. A partial is a a denture that is usually made with a substructure of a cast chrome metal and that can clasp around and hold on to your existing teeth. Now, with that said, there are only certain, you know, arrangements that we can make partials for. Um, if you, you know, have, you know, your canines in the front and you have some back here or sometimes just canines, um, but you really can't get away with just having these teeth up in the very front, the, the four you know, front centrals here or here. These are single rooted structures. And even though the canine is a single rooted structure, these are single rooted structures that are much smaller than this canine and they just cannot withstand the force that is necessary to hold a partial. So I always try to talk patients into uh, keeping their natural teeth and getting them fixed if possible. If they're missing teeth to get a partial denture instead of going to a full denture. But there is that point where you reach that, uh, that tipping point. Um, when teeth are missing beyond one side, you know, if you're missing all of these, like this canine is gone and one side's gone and you have these remaining back here, is it possible to make a partial? Yeah, but it's going to probably teeter totter in your mouth all the time. It's going to hold on over here to some teeth and it's going to wrap around the backs of your teeth, but there's always that chance it's going to want to teeter totter, uh, because there isn't anything over here to anchor it down. The same thing with the upper, you know, once you lose that one canine on that one side, along with those ones in the back, you're in a pickle. I've made partials before for people and they usually have to wear a little bit of a heat adhesive to hold that up when they're just not ready to get those other teeth pulled. But there definitely that is a tipping point is when you're missing all of one side, including that canine. Um, the other tipping point is when your teeth have broken down to the gum line. Uh, I myself have lost a couple of teeth down below the gum line and uh, through a lot of uh, attempts and uh, tries to save them. I did by myself several years, but eventually I had lost a tooth, lost another one, and had to have some implants and some crowns. Um, so it is definitely, uh, there's a tipping point if you can't afford, you know, getting implants, you may have to get the full dentures, you know. So if you're having teeth that are broken down to the gum line, or you have sort of severe periodontal disease. That is another one. You know, they can treat but not cure periodontal disease. Unfortunately, the only cure to periodontal disease is removal of the teeth. And it's very, very sad because sometimes people have beautiful teeth and they're in great condition, but they have gum disease, periodontal disease, and it takes out, you know, their mouth, their teeth, because th that gum disease will not go away. Maybe it can be held at bay for a while and improved, but it's not gonna go away until those teeth are gone. So there are definitely tipping points. Um, when I see a patient and I have a question, you know, like I had one yesterday, he came in and he has most of his lower teeth, uh, missing a couple in the very back, 
but uh, he has a large uh, porcelain bridge on the top that comes from this canine all the way to this canine. So porcelain teeth are very hard on our natural teeth. So he's been chewing and chewing and chewing here, you know, with these porcelain teeth against his natural teeth. And so he has worn off all of his teeth on the bottom front to tiny, tiny, tiny little nubs and broken off the rest in the back because he's been overclosing for so long. So when he came in, he wanted to talk about getting a partial, um, you know, for the upper and the lower. And I, and he was also missing, uh, one of the crowns came off of the front and he had a super glued in, but I had to, uh, tell him, you know, I, it's not that I don't think that your teeth could possibly be restored. I think they probably could be, but I'm not a dentist. You'd have to see a dentist to talk to them about that. But I do see, you know, and watch these cases over all these decades. And I kind of can predict the future on them. Um, even if this patient spent the tens of thousands of dollars that uh, it would take to restore all of these teeth down here and get implants and crowns, and, and it would be very, very, very expensive. I don't know how long this would last um, because there's still these this porcelain bridge, even if he had all of it done. I mean, he's, I want to say he's 73. I just don't, I think he'd probably outlive that dental work because uh, it's so extensive. So I referred him over to um, one of my favorite dentists and uh, wrote the referral and said, please evaluate and let the, the patient know what his options are um, and price out what it would cost and what the longevity for that dental work would be um, so that he can have an informed decision before he decides whether or not he wants to go ahead and get his teeth pulled and get dentures. That's my most important message out of all of this is if you're questioning, am I ready for dentures? I, I don't want you to jump right in. I want you to go see a dentist. Go see a dentist and go get an evaluation and have them look and talk to you about what all your options are. Now, uh, I have many, many good friends that are dentists, uh, but sometimes I get patients who go to uh, some dentist and they'll immediately try to talk them into uh, implants and full mouth restoration and crowns. And, you know, we're all in business, you know, these dentists went to dental school to, you know, make a living. So of course they have a, an amazing, you know, option for the patient, but it might just be out of that patient's reach. So, um, when you go to the dentist, you know, if they want to talk about implants, then talk about implants, but ask them about dentures, ask them about partials, ask them what your other options are so that you can get a feel for, you know, what that potential is in the future. And also, you know, I wouldn't make a decision on the spot. I would uh, definitely wait uh, and take a few days at least to consider your options and look at your finances and make that decision. Um, dentures are a big step. You know, it gets so much better. It's, it's rough in the beginning, but it gets so much better. That's why you see most of the content creators on here in the denture world talking about their first couple years in the denture process, because that part's hard that first year. It's, it's, you know, a roller coaster, especially that first six months, but you don't see very many content creators on here who have had dentures for years and years because they're too busy enjoying their life and forgetting about their dentures. Anyways, I hope this helps. Have a great day. Bye-bye.